So I often get people asking me what size longboard should they get? And people often fall into two different categories here. So what we're going to do today is we're going to break these two different categories down. And I hope that this can contextualize things for you so you can make the best decision possible when choosing the size of your next board. There are a few different considerations to be made when deciding the ideal board size for you. So I highly recommend that you watch this video through its entirety to figure out which of these will influence the board size for you. And I will keep this short and to the point. Let's get into the video. Now, the first thing that I usually discuss with people is whether you're considering this for a longboard that's a high performance board or a traditional longboard. Firstly, for the traditional boards, you can go up to anything 10 foot plus, depending on your preference, what you like to feel on the board and the way that you want it to ride and also your build. But for high performance boards, a little bit different. Typically, we notice that they cap this a little bit smaller. Generally speaking, you want to be able to maneuver the board a little bit easier, get it up into the lip. And so uh, removing foam and removing size can be a part of that. I've seen people who are exceptional uh, high performance longboard surfers with bigger builds that do even bring it down to a 9.1 or a 9 foot to keep it a longboard, but also make sure that they're able to maneuver it as much as possible. So just a little consideration there. What I did really want to do today and what I think you guys will find most valuable because I do get this question a lot is to kind of split it into two different case studies for two different types of people that might be asking this question. What size longboard do I get? Now, if we go into the, the scenarios that we can find for people who are asking me this question, it usually falls in two different camps. One is there's someone who wants something that is going to be on the bigger side and they're worried about having something too small. The typical problems that you'll be thinking about if this fits your scenario or situation is going to be, okay, you're worried about making sure you've got something that is big enough to paddle you into waves and have enough paddle speed, something that'll have enough board to allow you to trim properly on the wave, something that will be able to hold you and stabilize you whilst you're cross-stepping to the nose as well. So these are the problems that the scenario one would have. Scenario two, on the other hand, is kind of the reverse, where it's someone who potentially is a bit of a smaller build and is worried about things like being able to navigate the board in the lineup properly, even get the board to the beach properly as well, so without it being too much of a hassle, and then being able to turn the board on the wave. So a little bit more concerned about the maneuverability of the board, worried about it being too big rather than too small, as we had in the previous scenario. And what I'd like to do is break these down really nicely now. So I guess to give a bit of context into scenario one as well, so where we want a bigger size board, might be for someone who is a bigger build and they're potentially a little bit taller as well. For this, I want to set a baseline of 9.6. The reason is, from experience, I find someone in this situation with these problems, typically if we go below 9.6, that's where we start to notice a few of our problems. And this might be someone who's come from running a 9.1, 9.2, 9.3, .9 and they're saying, okay, the board just doesn't feel like it has enough for me to get going and it doesn't have enough for me to get going on the wave or when I'm paddling. If you're someone who is fairly tall and does have a bit of a bigger build, looking towards that 9.8 mark can be a really good thing as well. I definitely think in this scenario, go bigger rather than smaller because I think it's way better to overcorrect for these problems. So going to a 9.8 rather than something like a 9.6 or a 9.4. And we can even move up to our 10 footers. I know some people, bigger build, moving up towards your 10 foot and beyond has been really, really helpful for something like that. So I think that's definitely something that you should be able to go for. With the other scenario, scenario two, where it might be someone of a smaller build and looking to rectify problems more with maneuverability rather than anything about maintaining enough glide and speed. This is where we do need to make sure that we're starting off at that nine foot mark and moving up from there. Some people like to get a nine one instead of a nine footer. So just to make sure that the, the shape is not making any mistakes and it's still technically a longboard because the minimum of a longboard is nine foot. Um, so maybe starting at nine foot, nine one, and we can build up from there up to around that nine four sort of mark. To give some context, I'm about 5'9", five, 5'10", five, somewhere in between that and about 74 kilos. I ride a 9'4 to 9'6". I'm pretty happy within that spectrum. And for most people, they should be pretty happy with their boards within a couple of inches as well. But I definitely think starting smaller if you're in the scenario two and then starting bigger if you're in scenario one is a big thing to focus on. The other thing I did want to highlight as well is I think it is more important for people who are starting out or if in that beginner to intermediate phase to stick to these guidelines and it's your competence improves and you start to get more proficient with your surfing, you can certainly step out of these guidelines and we can use smaller boards. So towards that nine foot range and vice versa, we can use bigger boards as a smaller frame person as well. And of course it is all subjective and it's very much a preferential sort of thing. So uh, some people love the feel like myself of maybe something a bit bigger than what their build lends them to. So I can have fun on nine nines, 10 footers, um, even though I'm only, you know, five, nine, five, 10 versus, you know, a person who might enjoy the, the 
freedom of being able to turn a board that is a little bit smaller, um, having a bit more maneuverability, and people in the, the high performance camp as well being able to ride something that's a bit smaller and really let loose on that uh, equipment as well. So I think this is really valuable to understand and be able to use as a bit of a framework to guide your board selection, particularly in the beginning and intermediate phases. Once you get a really good understanding of what you like and the size that you like as well, we can go from there and you can start to experiment a bit with that. The other thing that I did want to highlight as well is there's so many other variables that play a part into board design. Size is just one of these, but we can think about the overall design of the board, how much rocker it has or how flat it is, and the width and thickness of it as well is going to play a big part. So I think there are things that we'll cover in the upcoming tip time. So please stay tuned for those. And if you do have any questions in particular with regards to what we've said today or uh, any of those other topics, please leave them in the comments below as well. And I'll be uh, happy to address those in the upcoming sessions also. So I hope that was really, really helpful. Again, we've got product from the Glide Surf Collective available for sale now. So if you want to check that out in the link below, I'd really appreciate it. Um, I really appreciate all the support that everyone's given so far with the launch. Um, and yeah, it's just super exciting. So thanks so much, everyone. But we'll leave it there for today and we'll catch you on the next one.